now the 10 minute drill. This is a big one. On 1010XL. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hit it, hit it. Let's go. Uh, 10 minute drill, sports concepts and rationalizations coming your way. What a weekend it was. Uh, Beef, at the end of this segment, what are we giving away today? Oh, it's a week. Uh, you know what next week is, guys, right? Uh, next the week players. is the players. Players yeah. Championship Week, and we're sending the Googans out. We got a pair of tickets to go to uh, next Tuesday's uh, Military Appreciation Concert with John Party, and they'll get a pair for Wednesday's practice round as well. Well, that's uh, always fun. That's a good day to go out there. You get uh, you get a little bit of golf, and you get a little bit of entertainment, you know, as like well. It. So, uh, perfect. They've always done a, a great job. All right. Um, Look, the, the Nick Foles thing ha- has happened. I mean, okay. it, it's it's coming. He's coming here. All right. Look now at the seven pick. Tell me what you would rather have happen. Would you rather take the elite, the elitist left of the elite defenders? Because, man, it sure looks like there's eight to ten defensive guys. that could be. This could be a be- one of the better defensive drafts, especially the front seven, maybe ever. Or would you rather see... Even with Nick Foles, would you see there, rather see Dwayne Haskins fall to seven? And if he does, would you take him there? Oh no, no. I, I, I with all I, listen, I think Dwayne Haskins can be a really good football player. But if we're going to win now, we're all in with Nick Foles, and we got to be all in with Nick Foles. And I want to make my football team uh, better uh, ASAP. And if both quarterback, if if Haskins is there and somebody wants to trade to get him, that's one thing. But I'd be just fine with. I'd be just fine with Devin White. I'd be just fine with Ed Oliver. I'd be just fine with whoever, you know, whoever's at number seven. Uh, Listen, I'll remind you this. uh, It's going to be a defensive player. J.J. Watt was drafted after Blaine Gabbert, right? That was like 11th in the draft. I mean, if I can get that guy, uh, sign us up. Let's go. So I I think there's a lot of – opportunity for the Jaguars in this draft and that that piece alone means I don't have to worry whatsoever about my really good defense already and then I can go to work with uh, adding offensive pieces uh, as we go through uh, the rest of the draft with my other you know four picks in the top whatever if I believe that Dwayne Haskins is a you know an elite quarterback a 15 year elite quarterback it's hard to make those uh, suggestions I it wouldn't kill me if they used that that pick there and and go from the sorriest quarterback situation the NFL for 20 years to um you know the exact opposite it wouldn't be my preference yeah. I'm not taking an offensive player there I'm I want not. you I want you to well okay I'm not taking a, I'm That's not fine. taking Metcalf I'm not taking Hawkinson I, 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 I'm not taking any of those guys yeah, I'm I taking wa- one of those elite defenders I want you to understand what can of worms you're putting on the shelf in Jacksonville, if you were to draft Dwayne Haskins as well, by the way, because uh, Nick who, Foles in the for, for for the organization, uh, and, uh, you draft a kid seven, you as a quarterback, you draft him to play, and we could have the luxury of saying, well, look, we don't have to play him, blah blah blah. That's all well and good till Nick Foles struggles in the uh, game two, and people are screaming, and all heck is breaking loose, and there's internal. Uh, we don't have the you know one of the Areas that we need to shore up is the the leadership of the locker room. I mean, that could get fractured. I mean, that's a, that's a tremendously big can of worms uh, if you were to draft Dwayne Haskins seven well, along with Nick. Ford, and that in may, my opinion, and that may be true, but you mark my words when we're sitting here in twenty twenty five. If uh-huh. Dwayne Haskins is an All Pro for yeah. the Titans, yeah, and whatever D lineman we took has been out of the league for a year with his third. Knee injury. Well, there's no question, but you can't. It's you just can't, such an important position. Yeah, but you can't live and that way. They've been way. so lax at it forever. Because listen, very easily we could have the and uh, believe me, I know I, I I live with it. How many times are we going to hear this? If Dwayne Haskins becomes a star uh, and he gets picked eighth, ninth, whatever, I tend to think both those guys are going to be gone. By the way, I do too. Which is I also it, another reason to be smart and proactive and get sh- Nick Foles. Oh, no, I get um, it. I, I, do, do, I'm not saying you don't. Yeah. But I, I, this isn't an aggressive theory on my what, part. I what, think I would take the defender, but I'm not. What ultimately happens is you could have drafted Dwayne Haskins. Well, that, that's, you that's drafted not the Dwayne same. Haskins. That's not the same as the Deshaun so, Watson and some of the other well, arguments. It, it might be. It might be. I mean, so. Well, we, you have a quarterback a lot better that you're paying a lot of money for the same year. Right. And if by 2025 we have a, a Lombardi trophy on the shelf down there, then 
so be it. Be a star, Dwayne. Then I won't care. But I understand what you're saying. It's a tough – listen, it ain't easy. It ain't easy. It's just the value of the position is would make me at least – if now look, what if I have Dwayne Haskins, you know, graded as the number one player in the draft? Listen, Montez Sweat at seven, who's faster than or, Julio Jones, Odell yeah. Beckham, Antonio Brown – by the, way, just, by the way, what you just said there is why you don't pay attention to DJ Chark's 40 time or DK Metcalf this year yeah. because of what you just said. Because yeah. Montez Sweat ran faster than three maybe the best receivers in the league. So yeah. Yeah. this th- the biggest snow job that happens at the Combine is the receiver 40 times. Well, it, more than any other position. Yeah. Look, at the top five of all time is five guys that stink. Yeah, no, I, I'm, not, I'm yeah. not arguing so, that. I, I, yeah, at DK Metcalf, if, if, they, if we – so much as sniff DK Metcalf in any round, I quit. I mean, good Lord. Look, I got to get more than 18 catches. Looks like Tarzan plays like Jane. Oh, man. You never know. Good I mean, grief. He does yeah. have better uh, bloodlines, I guess. But anyway. David Boston. Uh, uh, amazingly, amazingly, losing to Georgia in basketball is not a death blow for the Florida Gators who remain in Joe Lenardi's updated bracketology in the uh, nine slug, and I'll tell you why. Slug, the nine slug. Yeah, I'll tell you because, and, and deservedly so. L-E-D-E. Yeah, they are a slug team. Uh, well, I, I mean, again, I didn't think they'd win all three of those games, Jeff. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I can't say yeah, I'm. Yeah, but so you didn't think they'd win the LSU game, so that doesn't matter. That's correct. But <laughs> with that said. They got a lot of company. You look around the college basketball. Well, that's what I was going to say. Uh, there's a man, lot of teams like them. I'll give you the perfect example of a team that's like them. The Indiana Hoosiers are suddenly back in. How in the world at 15 and 14. Well, they've beaten like five ranked teams now. And 11th in the Big Ten with a sub-500 record. But I heard Joel Lenardi say, you better get used to it. There's going to be – because the problem – This is one of those years. Here's the problem. They're not going to – they just don't take um, – uh, Liberty, uh, w- if they don't win the A-Sun. Wofford or – yeah, if they don't win, they're – Smaller conference, they don't I get in. I think Wofford, Buffalo, and UCF are the three, quote, small. Although the UCF doesn't play in a small basketball conference. But I mean, I think those are Indiana the three that are getting in no matter six what. six and 12. It would be unheard of. The one thing that they look at, and whether, and obviously you disagree with it strongly. Yes. I, most people would disagree to a, de- to a degree. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, is is a team from the Colonial who has a 10-2 and two record are they better than Indiana, who's beaten Michigan State now twice, right. Michigan, and they, all these ranked teams? No. Right. Indiana's better than that team. They just play a much uh, harder schedule, and their conference schedule is full up of teams that are ranked and that are difficult to play. Uh, for, and now this is – now look, I do think this. I think it's unfair to give 6-12 and 12 in conference Indiana a boost over an SEC team that's, say, 9-9. Nine and nine. I don't think that's fair, so – I think that Indiana, watch having watched them some this year, will play their way right back out of it, Dan. Something tells me Indiana yeah. loses a couple, yeah. bounces in round one. You're Which not, very easily could you're never, what, what is? I kind of hope they win because I'd like to see the committee take an 8-12 and 12 Indiana team. I wonder what – here's the <laughs> question whatever. I have. I don't know how many games they have left. I, don't, I maybe wonder what done. the worst record yeah. is, overall record, for an at-large team. Yeah, good question. Because we may begin to a point where a 15-15 and 15 team gets yeah. in. Yeah. I don't know. I was going to ask you this question. Which of the weekend, um, you know, tan hidings, tail whippings by the University of Georgia athletic program over the Florida athletic program bothers you more? The basketball loss on Saturday or top uh, potential quarterback recruit Carson Beck um, kind of out of nowhere by some uh, thoughts uh, committing to Georgia over Florida where – People thought that he would end up. I would say the basketball thing, yeah. just because I think Florida's okay. I think Florida's in great shape at quarterback right now. Um, I think optically, it's a bad look for Florida to lose a kid from Jacksonville to Georgia. I think that's a problem. But I mean, I, I I've said to you before, and 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 uh, you know, I've always thought Carson Beck was better suited in a pro style offense, and I was concerned about him going to Florida, where you know you have to run the ball if you're a quarterback. That's part of based on the. Offense that Dan Mullen runs, which, by the way, works for Dan Mullen. He's sent kids to the NFL, so obviously his system is also – it's not like it's not good for the NFL. But I feel like Carson's more of a pocket passer. Now, uh, our friend Denny Thompson, who works with Carson, uh, uh, will tell you that's not necessarily the case. Carson is an unbelievable athlete, and he was. I mean, after all, Florida baseball offered him when he was in but ninth grade. But you still grade. might not prefer to play that way. Maybe he doesn't prefer to play. Athletic. That I don't know. He probably would tell you it doesn't matter, but – 
uh, uh, and that he just wants to play quarterback. But I, I wonder if that had anything to do with it. But again, it's a great get for Georgia uh, as far as them getting back. Their again, quarterback think- room is empty. They need him. Florida's yes. is chock full with three players yes. that they feel like could play. Yes. So he was much more needed at Georgia than he was at Florida. I listen. Recruiting is 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 loaded with these kind of developments. I don't want to make too much out of it, but this has the potential ultimately to be a recruiting storyline that lingers into the into the to the rivalry for the next three or four years. Because yeah. this is more than just boy out of nowhere he he committed to Florida. Uh, from what I'm told, Florida was told, told, not guessed, told by the family they would be recruiting. I mean, they would be uh, committing next week. I mean, even down to the date. So I sure Florida is a little bit, um, you know, feels a little bushwhacked by this. And again, that is not an unfamiliar storyline in recruiting. That's how that recruiting goes. I mean, uh, more, it is what it is. Another layer of disappointment, though, when it comes to recruiting, but that Parker Braun kid that everyone thought was going to, or that the Gators thought was going to end up in Gainesville it, is going to Texas. So they're going to miss out on him as well. well. Listen, it's not been a good uh, off-season week for Florida football as they don't get back. They lose that kid. They had a couple decommits as well. So uh, uh, not not a great uh, momentum is a finicky thing in yeah. college football. And when you get to the offseason – uh, it comes and goes, and it's gone right now for Florida. They'll have to recapture it with another big name the, these, uh, down the road. This bad news, though, is not near as much on the scale as all the good news and the positivity that's happened in the last year. Well, Florida's for example, still a top ten team. They have a loaded. <clears throat> for example, I thought Justin Fields was a must get recruit for Florida football back way back when 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 uh, Butters was chasing him. Uh, I, I thought they had to have him. I thought he was a uh, program. Was cool. Yeah program saver changer and when they did not get him and then he ended up at Georgia that to me stood out uh, a a lot more because of what they had Uh, now they have a little bit more uh, in in, in, uh, and they're very content with Emory Jones and Jalen Jones so uh, backing up Felipe Franks who will uh, go into the spring as the incumbent and starter somehow miraculously the Felipe Franks who flamed out so bad as a freshman and who really for the first half to three quarters of this year, wasn't completely in command. Somehow this time next year, we may very well be talking about him and his NFL chances. Yeah. I mean, there's no question about it. I I think that he is of, he's the kind of kid that if he has a year similar to the one he just had with some more improvement, that he would probably go to the NFL early. So, and if that's the case, you get your quarterback room on track a little bit and that you have young guys, you know. Waiting. All right, last thing, 0 to 100, uh, the drill indicator percentage of the Los Angeles Lakers in the NBA postseason. I can't go zero because mathematically it's not there, but it's less than 5%. That's how far. They're a joke. That's how far yeah. it's fallen now. As They're a, a joke. As it's, all, of, it's all on LeBron. It's as all of, his fault. And if I'm the Lakers, I'm I, I want my money back. As I didn't of get, Friday, I didn't get what I bought. The, w- w- the belief was that they would make it. The loss to the Suns is what has it flipped the thought process. Absolutely, they're they f- don't, I think they're yeah. four and eight since LeBron came back yeah. from injury. They're a mess, and, and it's I, LeBron's fault. And I just hope I hope it's an off season where there's some accountability laid at his feet. No one's listening to your platitudes, LeBron. They paid you a hundred zillion dollars. You're LeBron James. You've been to the finals eight straight years. If this team doesn't go to the finals, it's clear who that's the on. The playoffs. It's I mean the playoffs. Yeah, that's on you. Yeah, you're it's understand so. In the framework of you, since you're so content where your legacy is already, understanding in the framework of measuring you legacy-wise, this is going to knock you down. And and a player who had the potential to catch Jordan also has the potential to fall back to Kobe and some of the others who, you know, who have um, a pretty healthy and rich legacy in the league. So I, I'm so disgusted with LeBron and, and the, the effort that he gave this year in L.A., the, the petulance that he showed off the court. Apparently, he didn't realize this is the Western Conference. You can't play those BS games over here and, and be a factor. You can play them in the – and we're seeing the East and how mentally weak it is. They're 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 playing their way into postseason form. Kyrie has just gone off the reservation uh, with the Celtics. They're a disaster now. The East is weak-minded, and LeBron could force his way through. The West, and, eh, you know what? Have fun watching this offseason. Pitiful, pitiful performance by the guy who's supposed to be one of the best ever.
All right, we'll talk about that more uh, as the day goes by. Um, and and uh, but the Lakers do not look like they are in good state. I can't. You guys missed the, the the big story was I think uh, I think y'all's teams had a shootout on Friday night if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Well, then we came back the weekend we played. We ended played up again yesterday. Yes. Dude, uh, uh, it, our two teams are something that sounds similar to this, right. but I called it a split show. Yes, beef, beef, that's fair. Beef got to see firsthand something that you refuse to recognize, watch, uh-huh. and acknowledge, uh-huh. and that is that Trey Young is a freaking superstar. He's going to be a superstar. Ooh. Like a Steph Curry can fill it up, man. level yeah. superstar. Yeah. And and Doncic stole all that attention, and, and Young's slumping earlier in the year did, but he's... Lucomania. He's fantastic. Yeah. He's worth watching. In fact, when he got kicked out of the game yesterday, which was weak, uh-huh. I turned the game. I didn't, I didn't watch anymore. We did a wonderfully great solid at the Garden this weekend where it looked <laughs> like we were going to beat the Cleveland Cavaliers, yeah. and we went belly up in the last two minutes and lost the game, and we are now. There's no chance that we won't be in the uh, in the bottom two. Well, it's almost so. Well, it's bottom four, isn't it? The two doesn't matter. We're it's in the good four shape. all get the same. Um, I think it's three. I think the three all no, get the it's same. Four. I think no, it's the four. The percentage drops at four, and at four you can become five, six, or seven. I think. So. Um, I, I think you're in good shape. By the way, the Cavs uh, apparently unaware of how the whole thing works turned around and won yesterday over the Magic. Congratulations. So congratulations. And the Magic are the, 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 the hardest team to figure out in the NBA. They lose to the Cavs. They lose to the Knicks. And then they beat champions left and right. All right. So to, the, to that point, you're correct, Dan. Bottom three all equal 14% chance yeah. at the number one pick. What's yeah. the four? Number four. 12 and a half. 12 and a half. Yeah. So not all substantial. Right. Let's do caller number three right now for the prize pack. Yeah. And, uh, tell them, remind them again what again, they have. Uh, it's going to be kind of a double dip Tuesday for the players. Tuesday, they're going to go to the Military Appreciation Concert with John Beautiful. Hardy. And then they'll come back Wednesday with a pair of practice round tickets. All right. When we come back, I said something yesterday watching golf that I have never said, I thought I would never say. No. When we come back, this is The Drill. It's the Monday Morning Quarterback, DivorceMenOnly.com.